pack of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel on with Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Dell King saying welcome to Avalon Time with Red Foley, Edna Stilwell, Jeanette, the Avalon Chorus, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and Red Skelton. The orchestra opens the program with Tate What You Do. <laughs> gentlemen, Avalon cigarettes offer you two all-important advantages. Outstanding quality, amazing money-saving economy. Points of superiority that make Avalon stand apart ahead of others. Now first, the quality. Avalons are positively unsurpassed. They're made from the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, blended to perfection. In fact, you couldn't get finer quality tobacco in any other cigarette, regardless of price, regardless of brand. Next, economy. Avalon's cost three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands, a saving that will net you many, many extra dollars. So the next time you need cigarettes, remember Avalon's give you highest quality at a worthwhile saving. Give them a trial. You'd never guess they cost you less. And now we bring you the only man in radio who always puts his best foot forward and then stumbles over it, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Dell, just before we went on the air, did I hear you tell the cast that I had a very thick head of hair? Yes, but I don't believe I mentioned your hair. <laughs> Ah, uh, you don't bother me tonight. I feel great tonight. I just got back from the Lewis and Galinto fight in New York City. Lewis against Galinto. It was a case of youth versus aged in the wood. <laughs> oh, but both fighters had a marvelous physique. Lewis looked streamlined and Galinto was keg line. <laughs> there were a lot of celebrities there. Uh, Jim Farley, Mayor LaGuardia. Jim Farley thought that uh, Joe and Tony were playing post office for his benefit. <laughs> They both kissed the canvas. <clears throat> Grover Whaling, the big World Fair man, he was there incognito. He didn't want anybody to recognize him, so he didn't use his private box. He sat out in the main aisle on a big white ball. <clears throat> he rushed up to me and he says, how are they taking that out in Chicago? <clears throat> Remember we had a World Fair here too? <clears throat> I didn't get it either. <clears throat> <laughs> but the, the referee called both fighters to the center of the ring to give them their instructions. And when Galento found out that it was illegal to hit below the belt, he came out wearing a pair of turtleneck trunks. <laughs> With sleeves. <laughs> you know, I used to be a fighter myself. They used to call me the wallpaper kid. <laughs> I always got a pasting. <laughs> I got the lightweight belt, the heavyweight belt, the middleweight belt. In fact, I was belted right out of the business. <laughs> what a fight. I used to dress in a full dress, uh, fight in a full dress suit, you know. That's in case anything happened to me, they could just fold my arms. <laughs> I was known as a club fighter. Of course, they'd never let me take the club in the ring. <laughs> I remember my biggest fight was in the Chicago Stadium. I walked to the center of the ring and I took off my robe. Women, that's out, isn't it? I forgot. <laughs> Let me 
anyhow, it was the night I fought Max. Bear. <laughs> well, that's the end of the first round. Bob Strong and the boys will now take over with Back to Back. Hit it for me. <laughs> Strong and the boys playing their brand new number back to back. back. <laughs> sort of a stud poker. <laughs> I happened to think of that when I looked up and saw the audience at Full House. <laughs> well, kind of hot tonight, huh? Oh, you sure are, Skelton. I could tell you were hot when the corn started popping. <laughs> Say, Dell, did you notice the big hand that Bob Strong got after that last number? I sure did, Red. He got it strictly on merit, too. Oh, yeah, sure. All he did was stand there and wave his baton with an American flag on the end of it. <laughs> oh, you're not doing so bad yourself tonight with that red hair, white tie, blue coat, and red, white, and blue stripe of trousers. Yeah. Do you like it? It's yeah. a little thing I knitted between rehearsals. <laughs> I put it together in honor of 4th of July. Oh, well, listen, if you're trying to be Uncle Sam, where are the whiskers? The whiskers are on Scotland's jokes. <laughs> Don't tell me I know. It's Rogers, the fiddle player. How are you tonight, Roger, my little uh, chronic critic? Hello, Skelton. Say, I could use you on the 4th of July. Use me? What for? I'm going to light some firecrackers, and I need a little punk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They, you know, I'll, I'll win this guy over, Del. I'm going to treat him nice. I'll kill him with kindness. And if that don't work, I'll just kill him. Hello, boys. Hello, Edna. Say, how do you like my red, white, and blue striped outfit, huh? Well, stop turning around. You look like a barber pole. <laughs> Say, Red, is the program going off for the summer so you can take a vacation? No, not a chance. What do you think the radio audience would say if Skelton went off? They'd say, there goes the show off. <laughs> hey, come to think of it, I do need a vacation A summer program Hey, that's an idea I wonder where we could dig up somebody to replace me You might try the cemetery Yeah <laughs> I think we got enough deadbeats on here now <laughs> Look mm. Vacation time, though Little Red Schoolhouse I remember when I left the sixth grade Good old sixth grade, I'll never forget it no more books for three months, just swimming and playing. Then fresh as a daisy, back to the sixth grade. <laughs> you know, it seemed like it was only yesterday that I was a barefooted boy. See, I wanna, when did I get my first pair of shoes? Yesterday. <laughs> yeah. 
say, you know, if I could get somebody to replace me, I, I would go on a vacation. Or something. Come in. Hey, who's this guy with a flyer suit and goggles? Hey, are you an aviator? Well, I ain't an angel with a dirty face. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, an aviator. Oh, goodness me, yes, Mr. Skelton. And you know, it's just oodles and oodles of fun being a cloud hopper. <laughs> you want to go for a ride? No, not me, boy. It's too bumpy up there. Well, good heavens, do what I do. What do you do? I use an air cushion for my undercarriage. <laughs> Mr. Skelton, you love it up in the clouds. Yeah? Why, you just don't know what living is till you get a bird from an eagle. <laughs> Say, your face looks a little flushed, Ducky. What's the matter? Are you too warm? Oh, mercy me, no. You see, this suit I've got on is lined with fur, and it just tickles me pink. <laughs> well, I have to rush back to the airport, Mrs. Skelton. Yeah? You see, I'm all of a dither. Why? Well, I've got to do some blind flying, and I never touch the stuff. <laughs> Good old Herky. I bet he thinks an air pocket is something for a nudist. <laughs> hey, Red, Red, look who's here. Bill Thompson, the old-timer from Fibber McGee and Molly's program. Well, look who's here. How you feeling, old timer? Me? Why, I'm fit as a fiddle and ready for... Say, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> You're still romantic, eh, old timer? Say, just how old are you, old timer? Well, now, let's see. Back in the days of 49... Hey, now, wait a minute. Huh? Next thing you know, you'll be telling us you voted for Lincoln. Voted for him? I held him on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. That'd make you 120 years old. Now, you don't look that old to me. Can I help it if I live clean, Johnny? <laughs> well, say, old-timer, do you think you could put on a radio show so I could take a vacation this summer? Sure could, Johnny. Got some good Western stuff, and I could do a program called Death Valley Days. You can't do that. Hey! <laughs> hey! I say you can't do that. There's a program on the air now called Death Valley Days. Maybe you might put on one and call it Rudy Valley Nights. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny, but that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> the way I heard it, one fella says to the other fella, say, say. <laughs> What's the doctor say about that boy of yours who swallowed the lighted firecracker? Don't know, says t'other feller. We're waiting for the report. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't take any wooden Nickelodeons, Johnny. Excuse me, folks. I gotta make a speech to the old Republicans entitled, Life Begins at 1940. <laughs> Oh, boy, quite a guy, that old-timer. I'll bet he remembers when Finn was a Huckleberry and not a Mickey. Uh, listen, Red, do you think you really need a vacation? Need one? Yeah. Say, this radio works killing me. Oh, just a half hour a week with uh, maybe another half hour with your writers on the script? Yeah, what do you mean, a half hour on the script? Look, when we finished the script Monday, it was so late Tuesday morning, I didn't get to bed Wednesday afternoon till Thursday evening at 10 o'clock Friday night. <laughs> Well, if that's the case, uh, how about letting me take over the program for the summer? Now, I could... Well, uh, get uh, a minute, get a minute. <laughs> well, it's my voice instructor, Professor Tommy Mack. Yes, and I'm just the guy to take your point on the air. Yeah. Why, I can teach everybody in the country the proper way to speak. <laughs> sure gonna sound funny when the president starts a fireside chat by saying, My friend... <laughs> So stupid. That's what he always says. <laughs> say, look, Professor, you couldn't teach people to speak. There's not the pro look. Let's hear you say she sells seashells down by the seashore. Oh, that's a sin. Go ahead, say. She sells seashells. She sells seashells. She sells seashells. 
She peddles trams down by the waterfront. <laughs> It's the same thing. Yeah, she peddled clam down at the waterfront. <laughs> now, listen. On the way to you, I'm going to show everybody how to get breath control. Breath control. Here, let me show you. Mm. Pull in your tummy. Mm. Pull in your tummy. It's touching my backbone now. Oh, no, you better let your stomach out. Why? Your pants just went to half mad. Oh. oh. <laughs> now, the next thing I want to show you is the construction of syllables. Now, take a poem like... Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, three men in a tub. <laughs> What's so funny? What's so funny? I bet there's not one point in here knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Now, I want you to pay strict attention because I'm going to ask some questions when I'm through. <laughs> so, once again, rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, three men in a tub. Who do you think was there? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Hey, screwball, you're getting my hair. <laughs> Why'd that fiddle play a chud of twelve? Why'd you clap, clap, no, you thought? Really Why'd you put that side? Why'd you try to make a dope out of your stuff? Why'd you try to make a dope out of your stuff? Why'd you try to make a dope out of your stuff? Don't get excited. Who gets tired? I'm not excited. I think I'd better step outside a few minutes and get a bit of fresh air. Say, Red Foley, how about singing a beautiful number, Chapel in the Moonlight? All right, Red, here it is. Chapel in the Covered with moss Where I held your hand tenderly I often go there To gaze at the crows And dream that you'll come back to me How I love to hear the organ In the chapel in the moonlight While we're strolling down the aisle Where roses entwine How I'd love to hear you whisper In the chapel in the moonlight That the love light in your eyes forever will shine. Till the roses turn to ashes, till the organ turns to rust. If you never. Nice going there, Red Foley. Say, Dell, are there any more candidates around for the summer program? Oh, yes, indeed there are. There's one gentleman here that we all know, Red. Who's that? None other than that. The one and only, known from coast to coast. He has his picture in every post office in the country. Step I... aside, Wordy One. <laughs> well, well. Horatio K. Boomer. Oh, yeah. Hello, 
my boy. I just got the program to take your place for the summer. Kitty's program entitled Cozy Little Chats for Nosy Little Bra- Darling. <laughs> That sounds all right, Boomer, as long as you don't do the Rover Boys at reform school. <laughs> Say, uh, <clears throat> just a minute here. Have you got a script, Freddy? Oh, a script. Mm. A script, certainly, certainly. Let's see, where'd I put that script? Had it right here in my pocket. Just a minute, my boy, while I look. <laughs> radio script, radio script. Here's a letter from a Georgia boy doing five in Atlanta. Doing fine in Atlanta, fine. <laughs> Oh, well, one of my drawings, a hangnail sketch of a hangman's news. The lines are a bit shaky. I sketched them while riding a fast-moving rail out of town. <laughs> yes, indeed, a little pamphlet on how to remove tar and feathers. <laughs> Comes in very handy at times. And a punch board. Punch board? You wouldn't care to throw a left hook at it, would you? <laughs> no, no, come on. Where's the radio screen? All right, take it easy, Carrot Top. I'll find as soon as I can. <laughs> Let's see, I got here a pocket knife with attachments, including a hacksaw, jimmy, blackjack, and a glass cutter. <laughs> Handy little tool. Wonder what this knife blade is for. <laughs> How to figure that out? I have an interesting book on how to start a fire by Arson Wells. <laughs> There's a magnet, a pocket comb with buck teeth. <laughs> A check for short beer. <laughs> well, well, imagine that. No radio script. <laughs> Must have left it at the board meeting. Nice chaps on that parole board. <laughs> Must go back and get it. Hope I remember the name I gave him. Funny how I go through life making an alias out of myself. <laughs> Hey, I'm lucky that guy didn't talk me into spending my vacation at uh, Leavenworth. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those who tuned in late, this is not we the people. <laughs> What's the difference so long as you wild the people? <laughs> now they're starting to jump out from behind gag. Now don't tell me you've got a program to replace this one. Certainly. I'm Gypsy Rose Levy. <laughs> program on the radio, I'm telling fortunes. Yeah. With hypnotism, with reading tea leaves. <laughs> well, there's no tea leaves around here. This is the Avalon cigarette program. So I'm reading the ashes. <laughs> no, now that hypnotism sounds like something interesting for the listeners. Say, put me in a, in a trance so that I can have a preview of what I uh, could expect on a vacation. Up in the North Woods someplace, okay. huh? Okay. Just tell yourself where you want to go, and so soon you're in the sentence, I'll have you in a transom. Look, I want to dream about a vacation up in the North Wood. Look me in the eye, if you'll be so kindly. <laughs> Which is the good one? The other um, one. <laughs> well, look, I like to get about 100 miles away from radio, from friends, and from the radio. And look me in the eye. From my friends, and from the scripts, and... Am I astonished at void? <laughs> oh boy, all alone up in the North Woods at last. No radio cast to rib me, no stooges to heckle me. Perfectly quiet. Boy, this is the life. Let's see, what shall I fix to eat? Short ribs, stewed tomatoes, skeleton corn, a dash of ham, and heckleberry pie. Yeah. <laughs> Who said that? I could have sworn I heard a voice. Oh, it's probably just some hangover from a broadcast. <laughs> it's about time, though, I sit down and ask myself a very serious question. I bet you get a silly answer. Yeah. <laughs> Say, that sounded like that. No, it couldn't be. Let's see, what was the question I was going to ask myself? Oh, yeah. What is a radio comedian, anyhow? A screwball whose mind suddenly went blank. Yeah. That's Roger's voice, or I'm a monkey's uncle. Hello, Uncle Red. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm a monkey. That ain't possible. Don't tell me that I've forgotten those vaudeville days. I'm a radio comedian. I'm having one of those radio nightmares. No. I'll pinch myself and wake up. Oh, Watch who you're pinching. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm getting jittery. 
Uh, I'll take this gun and go out and hunt some deers. Say, is that a deer over there? Well, that ain't a full moose. <laughs> oh, I'll bet those are just echoes. Sure, that's what they I'm standing on the edge of Echo Canyon. I think I'll try out a few echoes. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? Vaudeville. Vaudeville. Gosh, even Vaudeville's coming back. <laughs> No, it can't be. My mind's wandering. I'm losing my mind. No. Well, well, imagine that. No mind. Must be a radio comic. <laughs> Not enough sleep. Writing scripts, that's what's doing it. I can't take it. Voices, heckling, stooges, every time I open my mouth. Never open your mouth like you have nothing to say. <laughs> Telegram from Mr. Skelton. Telegram from Mr. Hey, Scouting. I'm hey, Scouting. Scouting. Hey, Scouting. You never get oh, it. They cost you less. Good oh. heavens, the old town. Oh, well, well, imagine that. Oh, oh. I'm insulted. I'm modified. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh, get a minute. Get a minute. Let me go away. I'm tired. I need a rest. No, let me away. Dad, wake up. Wake uh, up. Here's uh, a telegram. What? Here's a telegram for oh. you. Oh, well, gee, where am I? Oh, gee, I must have dozed off to sleep there. Boy, what a dream I just had. What? Well, here's a telegram for you from the radio critic. Radio critics? Let's see what it says. It says, uh, it says, don't take a vacation, Skelton. We need you for the hot summer months because you're the only man in radio who always leaves his audience cold. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... It's just like finding money when you switch to Avalon cigarettes. You see, Avalons cost three to five cents less than other popular price brands. And that repeated saving of three to five cents on every pack of cigarettes you smoke turns into many, many dollars in a very short time. And remember this, it's extra money you'd never have otherwise. But without knowing, you'd never guess they cost you less. Because you get this money-saving economy in Avalon's as an extra. Their quality cannot be surpassed by any other cigarette, regardless of price, regardless of brand. Avalon's are made from the very finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos that grow. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Avalon's are cigarettes that are long on quality, short on cost. Try a fact tonight. I guess that's about all for the... Say, what's this, Dell? It's just a blank piece of paper. Well, how about that? We haven't got any finish to the show. What? No finish to the show? Well, well, imagine that. No finish to the show. Thought I had one in my pocket. Yes. Well, maybe you could use this for a finish. Can of varnish. Wonderful finish. Yeah. <laughs> that finish is all right. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. See you next week. Remember, friends, during the week when you ask for Avalon... Don't forget your change. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents plus city or state tax. with us next Saturday evening at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. The characters of Horatio K. Boomer and the Old Timer were portrayed by Bill Thompson through the courtesy of the makers of Johnson's Wax. Del King speaking. Good night. The selection back to back heard on this program is from Second Fiddle. This is the National Broadcasting Company.
W-E-A-F, New York.